Night of July 5th. For some of the diehard locals, the party rages on. The majority of the people you come across here weren't here 10 years ago. Are they wanderers and drifters, or do they just follow the money until it runs out? I'm not really sure what most of people's plans here are. Do they plan to stay? Do they plan to move elsewhere? What kind of work can you find if drilling and oil is all you know? How long will the boom last? How long will the region continue on like this? I also think about how the whole boom started. How did this all start? Why is the oil even here? How are people getting it out? What is the Bakken Formation? To go to the origin, it took place a long time ago. We're talking a long time ago, somewhere around the 360 million year mark. This part of the North American continent wasn't completely above water. The earth in this particular spot could have been a swamp or a gulf. Tons of zooplankton, algae, and other organisms died here and got trapped in the earth. Much of them were buried in mud or earth before they had the chance to decay. When they did decay, under pressure and time, they became fossil fuels. All living things, at least that we know of, are made out of carbon. Plants, animals, and the soil that plants need to grow, it's all carbon. It's trapped down here, and humans are drilling it out. The gas and oil are being pulled out of what's called a petroleum play. A play is a set of oil fields or prospects that are made out of the same geological circumstances. Fossil fuels have been formed all over the world in the last few hundred million years, but not all at the same time and not out of the same set of conditions. In the United States, there are quite a few plays, including the Appalachian Play, where in Pennsylvania, the first oil in the world was drilled and it created the first oil rush. To think about the Bakken Formation, you have to think in three dimensions. It's all underground, so drillers have to move up and down, front and back, and even side to side. Here's a cross-section of the Bakken and what sets of different dirt were laid down underneath us. Right about here is when the dinosaurs died 64 million years ago. Here's when the dinosaurs first arrived on the scene. It's around here that you start to get to the fossil fuels. In this spot, hundreds of millions of years ago, living organisms, many of them simple zooplankton and algae, died around here and got covered by the earth. The process continued long before these guys, going back a few more hundred million years. Even down to the Cambrian era, the time in Earth's history when complex life first formed. For over 200 million years, out of the 4.5 billion years the Earth has been around, and that's about 4.5% of the Earth's history, life forms have been dropped here to decay and turn into fossil fuels. That is a lot of trapped carbon. There are several known ways to extract all the fuel here in the North Dakotan oil fields. The most popular process is called hydraulic fracturing, also known as fracking. About 60% of all new oil and natural gas wells are drilled using the fracking method. First, a fracking site is established and a rig is propped up, drilling into the earth. The well is drilled about 2,500 to 3,000 meters deep, or about 1.5 to 1.9 miles down. For perspective, if you were drilling down to the Titanic from sea level, you'd be almost 80% of the way to the wreck. That's pretty deep. At that kickoff point, they usually start the horizontal drilling into the shale. From there, it travels sideways for almost a mile. A special perforated gun is run down to the well and fired, which breaks the earth apart into tiny fractures. After a few months from that gun firing, the well is ready to be fracked. Fluids are pumped into the well at extremely high pressures. 90% of these fluids are just water. And we're talking a lot of water. About 8 million liters are used, which is roughly the amount of water Williston, North Dakota uses here in two and a half days. The other 10% of the fluid is chemicals. These chemicals are used to lubricate the fossil fuels out, dissolve impurities such as minerals, and disinfectant to sterilize the fluid from bacteria. The fluids help extract and pull the fuels from deep within the earth up to the surface. Fracking has been particularly controversial in recent years, most likely due to the fact it's become such a popular extraction method for the past 10 years or so. The storage of chemical-infused water, or the process of fracking itself, can cause dangerous leaks that contaminate local water supply. A study from the nonprofit organization USAEE, or the United States Association for Energy Economics, found that Alberta lost 3.5% of its irrigated crop production revenue in 2014 due to hydraulic fracturing. It unfortunately gets more controversial. Back during the Bush administration, the Energy Policy Act of 2005 was passed, which lifted regulations on chemicals used in fracking while also exempting fracking companies from disclosing what chemicals they used to frack. This is known as the Halliburton loophole. Halliburton is the world's leader in fracking services. 
Who used to be the CEO of Halliburton before he became vice president? Dick Cheney. That loophole was suggested by an advisory team in the second week of Bush's presidency. Who chaired it? Dick Cheney. Just to add another layer of dispute on an already controversial subject, fracking has been known to cause earthquakes. Seismic activity has now been well and often documented in regions where fracking is common. It's worse in some regions than others. Oklahoma, a state with a political climate like North Dakota, which is very friendly to the fracking technology, has experienced a spike in powerful earthquakes. Of the earthquakes of magnitudes four and a half or higher, we have one in 1882, 1952, 74, 97, and then 14 more since 2011. Here's a world map of seismic activity. You can see Oklahoma is just full of activity. This is in large part due to the fact that the earth under Oklahoma is much less stable than that in North Dakota. There may be more of an energy boom going on here, but Oklahoma seems to be sitting on more hollowed ground. On top of all the controversies, layers, and disputes with the technology is the argument for climate change against fossil fuels in general. If you're a longtime watcher on my channel, you already know my scientific take on the subject. Saying climate change is man-made is a scientific statement. Saying climate change is not man-made is a political statement. I'm not here to speak on behalf of the people of the North Dakota boom on the subject. We'll see in coming years how the planet tackles fossil fuels. It's possible renewable energy will be made cheaper. It's possible government intervention could inhibit fossil fuel sector's growth. All I know is that for now, the people of the Bakken boom are here to stay, for good or ill. It's the same gamble we all make whenever we're making a risk. The answer varies if you're just speaking for yourself, your family, your community, your country, or your planet. Is the benefit worth the cost?